The most important thing about artifacts is not what we see, but what we know about them, the secret stories they reveal to us. Brace yourself as we delve into the chilling narratives of 15 haunting relics salvaged from the depths of the ocean's greatest tragedy, the RMS Titanic. These artifacts will send shivers down your spine, compelling you to reconsider embarking on that cruise you've been dreaming about. Join us as we uncover one of the greatest tragedies of all time, piece by piece. Number 15. Set of Keys. Did you know a special set of keys had the ability to save many lives during the Titanic's tragic sinking? These keys belong to a courageous crew member named Samuel Hemming, and they may have been used to get lifeboat lamps out of a chamber below deck. For those trying to flee the sinking ship, these lanterns provided essential illumination. Hemming undertook a risky trek to recover these life-saving items with unmatched bravery. Hemming managed to negotiate perilous hurdles and escape with the lifeboat lamps despite the inherent danger present within the Titanic's interior. He would lead survivors to safety thanks to his bravery and fast thinking. Hemming carried these three keys for the rest of his life as a reminder of the heroic deed that freed him from the grasp of the sinking ship. The key's importance persisted as they were handed down through the generations. Each new owner connected with their tale of bravery and tenacity. They eventually ended up in the hands of a private collector, further safeguarding their historical significance. The Titanic's terrible story left behind more artifacts that were acquired by collectors and fans. In 2016, an auction for a Titanic locker key brought in the astounding sum of $100,000. Such artifacts remind us that there is a profound human connection hidden underneath the Titanic's tragic story and act as concrete references to the tales we have heard throughout our lives. The auctioning of these artifacts, be it the keys that unlock the path to salvation or the locker key that once guarded personal belongings, brings the magnitude of the tragedy uncomfortably close to home. These relics bridge the gap between the stories we have witnessed on the silver screen and the harsh realities faced by real people. Number 14. Violin. If you've seen James Cameron's legendary film, you'll remember the band performing bravely as the ship sank into the cold depths. But did you realize this moment was not made up? It was based on a true incident, and among the artifacts recovered from the sinking vessel was the violin that performed the song. As the Titanic collided with the iceberg, an eight-piece band was hired to calm the passengers' worries. They boldly played music while lifeboats were loaded, bringing some order to the mayhem. Eyewitnesses reportedly stated that the musicians continued to perform until their final breaths, demonstrating their unshakable commitment. Sadly, none of them survived the catastrophe. Wallace Hartley, the band's leader, was among those who passed away. His corpse was recovered from the freezing seas mere days after the ship went down, and his violin case was still connected to his back. One of the rescuers opted to preserve it as a touching keepsake. Wallace Hartley's body was put to rest in England, escorted by tens of thousands of people paying their respects. Years later, the violin case was unearthed, and it was established that it belonged to Wallace Hartley. The band members had the right to save themselves because they were not members of the ship's crew. They opted to spend their final minutes in service, comforting the condemned passengers. As the ship sank into the depths of darkness, they played the moving song, Nearer My God to Thee. Wallace Hartley's violin was returned to his former fiancée, Maria, and was subsequently acquired by a British collector for a whopping 1.7 million pounds. It is still one of the most precious pieces of Titanic artifacts ever auctioned. It's impossible to comprehend Maria's feelings after hearing the account of her beloved's sacrifice. Number 13. Huge Piece of the Hull A gigantic part of the Titanic's hull captured the world's attention, leaving an unforgettable impact on those who were lucky enough to see her magnificence. It was known as the Big Piece. It was the most significant artifact ever recovered from the ill-fated ship, weighing 15 tons and measuring 13 by 30 feet. The Big Piece's narrative began in 1994 when it was discovered under the ocean's surface. The recovery operation could not be tried for several years, and a brave effort in 1996 ended in disaster when a wire sustaining the huge chunk snapped. 
However, optimism remained, and the piece was eventually discovered in 1998. This amazing part of the hull, recovered from the ship's starboard side, bears witness to the Titanic's catastrophic confrontation with nature's harsh powers. Its portholes still contain bits of glass trapped in time, inspiring awe and amazement. Standing next to the big piece is like standing next to the Titanic, leaving tourists dumbfounded. Those who have had the honor of experiencing this magnificent artifact firsthand are frequently struck with emotion. As the weight of history and the depth of the tragedy descends on them, tears flow freely. Some claim to have sensed a tingling feeling when they touch the massive artifact. It's as if the Titanic's own spirit is soaked in their blood, forging an unbreakable link between the past and the present. With the sight of the big piece, the Titanic transcends myth and becomes a reality. Its influence on exhibition visitors is evident as they sit in observation rooms, transfixed by its presence. The massive fragment acts as a time portal, allowing us to glimpse into the ship's soul and comprehend the grandeur of the events that transpired on that fatal night. Number 12. Bowler's Hat A bowler hat can be found among the assortment of personal items that divers have pulled from the Titanic's debris. This hat was found in 1993, surrounded by the ship's wreckage on the ocean floor, and has remarkably held up well over time. Its condition demonstrates the durability of the materials employed and provides a window into the era's fashion. The significance of this item must be taken into account, even if the owner of the hat's identity is still unknown. Men wore bowlers as a sign of flair and refinement during that period, and they were a common headwear option. We wonder about the person who formerly wore this specific hat, since there were hundreds of men aboard the Titanic, and any one of them may have worn it. The bowler hat's owner's obscurity serves as a reminder of the numerous lives that were lost on that tragic night. Every item recovered from the debris acts as a concrete link to the people who boarded the tragic ship. Their collective sadness and the experiences that were tragically cut short are represented by the hat. As we think of the hat's journey, from its trendy origins to its final resting place at the bottom of the ocean, this little item becomes a platform for reflection, inspiring us to reflect on the lives lived and the hopes destroyed by the Titanic's disaster. Even while the hat may not reveal its owner's identity, its simple existence is a monument to the individual tales and common experiences that took place on that fateful night. It serves as a reminder that the item's ultimate value rests not in the wearer, but rather in the event's legacy and its effects on society as a whole. Number 11. Sheet Music From the depths of the North Atlantic, the band of the Titanic's music sheet has been found. Two pieces of music were discovered in the debris, on Mobile Bay, from around 1910 and Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, from the Broadway production of Madame Cherie. These musical artifacts provide a window into the repertoire performed on that crucial evening. The sheet music has an importance that extends beyond its status as a historic relic. It helps us to picture the tunes that previously filled the air and brings us closer to the ambiance on board the magnificent ship. Talented musicians in the band played with unrelenting passion while the turmoil erupted all around them. In the middle of the looming disaster, their music provided a source of comfort, maintaining a pretense of normalcy. Howard Irwin, who intended to accompany his companion on the Titanic for the final leg of their round-the-world tour, is one of the people associated with these musical gems. Irwin, however, never entered the ship, probably becoming a victim of a heist soon before it sailed. Henry Sudbury Jr., his companion, unfortunately, perished in the catastrophe, but the music he was carrying was saved. The discovery of these musical artifacts serves as a reminder of the poignant human tales linked with the history of the Titanic. It gives the story more depth and complexity by invoking both awe and sadness. As we learn more about the journey's specifics, the tragedy scope becomes more and more overpowering and genuine. A realistic picture of life on board the Titanic before the calamity hit is created by the descriptions of the environment and the live music played on board. As we consider the lives that were irrevocably altered and the hopes that were dashed in those frigid waters, it intensifies the feeling of loss and sadness. Every new piece of information concerning the Titanic's journey surely heightens awareness of its significance. Number 10. Love Letters 
Beyond being one of the most well-known disasters in history, the Titanic is also known for its everlasting love tale, which is immortalized in millions of people's hearts owing to the classic film. The mythological hero Jack may not actually exist, but the ship itself saw true love blossom amidst its splendor. Through the discovery of a sentimental love letter which evokes feelings that transcend time, this narrative of love is brought to light from the depths of history. A fascinating artifact, a love letter written by Titanic cabin attendant Richard Geddes, was discovered among the antique artifacts unearthed over 70 years after the disaster. The letter, written on the ship's official stationery and included in its real Starline envelope, perfectly captured Richard's deep love for his wife. The love letter provided private information that was only known to individuals who had traveled on the Titanic in addition to loving feelings. Richard described a close call that happened on April 10th, only a few days before the unfortunate run-in with the iceberg. The luxurious liner came perilously near to tragedy and just avoided total destruction. The Titanic's propeller's strong propulsion had ripped the iron liner's cables apart, putting the two ships at immediate risk of crashing. Only Captain Smith's quick decision to send a tugboat to tow the Titanic away was able to prevent disaster. Richard's message reflected the general opinion of the passengers, who saw this near miss as a worrying portent. The occurrence served as an ominous reminder of the precarious equilibrium between life and fate that pervaded the mood of the ship. The discovery of Richard's love letter offers a singular and personal window into the people linked with the magnificence of the Titanic. It demonstrates how love may endure despite approaching disaster. Richard's remarks are preserved as genuine and timeless artifacts by the original stationery and envelope. Number nine white gloves a pair of white cotton gloves is one of the most amazing and uncommon titanic artifacts ever found fabric doesn't often endure for very long underwater so these gloves are all the more remarkable because of this the gloves still display signs of their previous grace despite their age and the difficult conditions they underwent their slim fit and elaborate detailing offer a window into early 20th century fashion and taste the glove's extraordinary condition of preservation increases their attraction, despite the fact that the original owner is still unknown. These exquisite items were included for years as a crucial component of several Titanic displays, enthralling audiences with their historical relevance. But in 2016, the gloves were removed from public view and placed in a conservation facility owing to their fragile state. To protect their long-term preservation, it was decided to withdraw them from the exhibition circuit. The gloves needed special attention since they were delicate and susceptible to further damage. Experts could safeguard them from more harm by putting them in a conservation center where they could be preserved in an environment that would support that. The gloves' disappearance from visibility did not lessen their importance. In fact, it emphasizes how crucial it is to preserve and maintain such unique artifacts for future generations. The gloves represent the tales and lives that will always be associated with the tragic ship, serving as a concrete link to the Titanic's past. Number 8. Vials of Perfume During a daring rescue attempt in the year 2000, a strange discovery rose from the depths. An intriguing leather bag. Dick Barton, a salvage expert, remembers the incident, saying that the exact nature of the item remained unknown until it pierced the surface. When the purse was opened, however, a stunning metamorphosis occurred. The lab was immersed in the subtle aroma of Edwardian perfume. The leather purse was a treasure trove of olfactory delights, 62 little vials of perfume samples. Adolf Saffield, a 47-year-old perfume manufacturer and first-class traveler from Manchester, owned these wonderful scents. Sheffield had managed to evacuate the sinking ship, but his treasured leather bag had stayed behind, awaiting its fortunate rescue years later. Several more pouches with Saffield's name were also recovered from the Titanic debris, much to the surprise of salvagers. Each pouch had a variety of scent samples, tantalizing relics from another age. Saffield's fragrances were given a second chance when the ship's damages were repaired. The meticulous dissection of the perfumes into their separate chemical components began the endeavor to restore Saffield's scents, this painstaking disassembly was required to reproduce the long-lost fragrances. A perfume called Legacy 1912 was produced as a result of the aromatic leftovers. It captures the spirit of an age, conjuring recollections of a bygone era. So, how does it smell? 
Consider subtle lemon and neroli notes intertwined with the blush of a gentle rose. Warm, sheer amber gives depth and sensuality, blending with the other ingredients to produce a wonderfully captivating olfactory experience. It is a scent that captures the atmosphere of the Edwardian era, allowing us to immerse ourselves in the era's elegance and sophistication. This invention went beyond the scent itself. Its package design was inspired by a heartbreaking artifact recovered from the wreckage, a door that was raised to the surface as a memorial to the Titanic's awful destiny. Number 7. Pocket Watch This rusted vintage pocket watch was recovered from the lifeless body of Sanai Kantor, a Russian Jewish immigrant, and carried a narrative that rivaled the epic romance of Jack and Rose. Sanai Kantor boarded the Titanic with his loving wife, Miriam. They boarded the great ship as second-class passengers, dreaming of a new life in America. Their goals were modest but profound. They wanted to study medicine and dentistry in the busy city of New York. Sanai, a furrier by trade, brought trunks of furs in the hopes of selling them to pay for their voyage to the American dream. But fate had other plans for them. The couple's hopes were dashed on that tragic night of April 15th, when the Titanic fell to the merciless sea. Miriam sought safety in a lifeboat, following the women and children first tradition. But Sanai bravely refused to abandon the ship. He was thrown into the frigid waters among thousands of others, eternally separated from his beloved Miriam. Days passed, and the pocket watch shivered in the sea's embrace. Its condition bore the marks of its watery demise when it was ultimately retrieved. The hands had faded, the dial had become discolored, and the movement had rusted. The once gleaming silver finish had practically worn away. Despite its flaws, this Swiss-made watch has a fascinating force, the capacity to immortalize the lives intertwined with the Titanic disaster. In an amazing turn of events, the watch, which was battered and damaged, found itself back in the limelight. It fetched an astounding $57,500 at auction demonstrating its potential to keep the Titanic's legend alive for almost a century. The tale of Sanai Cantor and many others is revealed through the watch's deteriorating veneer, reminding us of the people who were permanently lost on that dreadful trip. Number 6. Menu of the Ship's Last Meal Have you ever wondered what the menu looked like aboard the most luxurious and opulent ship in the world? As we explore the enticing cuisine on board the Titanic, Get ready to be captivated. The Titanic still holds our attention 104 years after its tragic sinking, not just because of the tragedy's scope, but also because it evokes a bygone period marked by disparities between classes and bravery. Let's examine the dining experiences that the various passenger classes on the ship had in more detail. The menus, which are chock full of mouthwatering choices, offer a look into the extravagance and culinary indulgence that characterized the Titanic's voyage. The meal was a spectacular occasion for affluent first-class travelers. The meals offered a superb variety of foods. The offerings were a feast for the senses, with dishes including delicate spring lamb served with mint sauce and luscious roasted turkey served with cranberry sauce. Traditional plum pudding and baked haddock with a strong sauce completed the gastronomic spectacle. The sweets were similarly enticing, luring the respected visitors' palates with treats like wine jelly. The first-class menu served as evidence of the ship's dedication to providing the best cuisine at sea. The second-class meals might have been a little less lavish, but they nevertheless served scrumptious food. Hearty meals, including roasted chicken, grilled mutton chops, and baked haddock in butter sauce, were available to passengers. The second-class travelers were guaranteed a delicious and enjoyable meal thanks to these culinary options. The third-class menu, on the other hand, albeit less extensive in contrast, nonetheless represented the constraints that travelers with less money had to deal with. Breakfast, lunch, and supper were straightforward events with dishes like rice soup and boiled potatoes. For the third-class passengers, nourishment rather than luxury was prioritized. It's crucial to remember that the Titanic was renowned for having an excellent onboard restaurant. In fact, over 40 distinct meal selections were offered during just one lunch service, demonstrating the ship's dedication to fine dining. Number 5. Titanic Deck Bell. Beautiful Titanic glided through the dark waters, oblivious to the impending disaster. 
A gleaming danger drew the attention of the ship's lookout. The man in the crow's nest noticed a threatening fleet of icebergs in the distance. Panic erupted as he frantically rang the alarm bell three times, a desperate warning to the crew and passengers that tragedy was on the way. Iceberg, right ahead! Decades later, in 1987, a rare artifact was discovered in the depths of the ocean, the iconic bell that had resonated throughout the Titanic. This bell, which is now housed at the Titanic Museum, provides a tactile reminder of that terrible night. It attests to the bravery and fast thinking of the watchman, Frederick Fleet and his buddy Reginald Lee, who amazingly escaped the disaster. Following the disaster, Fleet revealed their traumatic tales, shedding light on the events of that night. Surprisingly, they stated that if they had been given a pair of binoculars, a gear that would have significantly aided them in their duties, they might have discovered the iceberg sooner. When asked how much earlier they could have noticed the iceberg, Frederick Fleet said chillingly, enough to get out of the way. The discovery underscores the catastrophic repercussions of a simple omission. The titanic catastrophe had a profound effect on those who witnessed it firsthand. It took an unfathomable toll on the lives of everyone on board. Each warning bell toll resonated throughout the ship, creating a mixture of panic, uncertainty, and incredulity. The weight of the tragedy weighed hard on their hearts and thoughts, changing their lives for the rest of their lives. Frederick Fleet could no longer withstand the weight of his sadness after the death of his wife. At 1965, he sadly ended his life, a striking reminder of the Titanic's demise's long-lasting psychic wounds. Number 4. Harold's Whistle A unique relic from the sad Titanic disaster is the whistle that previously belonged to 5th Officer Harold Lowe. One of the disaster's unsung heroes, Lowe led the 14th lifeboat that brought people to safety from the icy seas, while also acting as a literal whistleblower during the maritime catastrophe. After bringing the passengers to safety in his lifeboat, Lowe showed great bravery by going back to the crash to help other people who were in need in the ocean. In James Cameron's film adaption, he is seen saving Rose, played by Kate Winslet, during this risky homecoming, immortalizing his courageous actions. North Wales native Harold Lowe was 29 years old when he performed his bravery in the Atlantic. After the event, he carried on working as a sailor. He tragically passed away in 1994 at the age of 61. Unquestionably brave during the Titanic catastrophe, Lowe is still admired for his services today. He is alleged to have approached J. Bruce Ismay, the managing director of White Star Line, asking him to back off and threatening to let everyone die if he did not. It is known that he put women and children into the lifeboats. No other officers dared to turn around towards the disaster out of concern that the already overflowing lifeboats would be overwhelmed by desperate and cold survivors. Lova stands out for having remarkable courage, which gives his whistle a profoundly significant meaning. The whistle is now up for auction at the prestigious British auction house, Henry Aldridge and Son, and is inscribed with the inscription Lieutenant H.G., Low Royal Naval Reserve. Its estimated price is $3,788, which is a reflection of both its historical significance and Harold Lowe's legacy. Number 3. Alligator Purse A valued possession embellishing the majestic Titanic was a stunning alligator handbag. This treasured ornament belonged to Marion Meanwell, a British hat manufacturer who hoped to establish a new life in America. While Marion had no intention of boarding the Titanic, fate interfered when the ship she had planned to embark on became unavailable. She had no choice but to purchase a third-class ticket for the ill-fated journey. Marion prepared her stuff for the trip, unaware that her alligator pocketbook would become an odd keeper of important documents. A marriage certificate, a canary voucher verifying a shipment to a retired relative, and a loving note from a prior landlord attesting to her prompt payments were nestled inside its bounds. The tough alligator leather protected these priceless papers from the ravages of the water, allowing them to survive the ship's fatal incident. Conservators are awestruck by the exceptional quality of the alligator skin used in Marion's purse. Its thickness and longevity are unrivaled, a monument to a bygone era's workmanship. Such rigorous attention to detail and the use of high-quality materials resulted in the construction of long-lasting objects that could stand the test of time. 
Marion's alligator purse is a reminder of a time when quality was valued and goods were designed to last. However, as a result of the Titanic disaster, Marion, like so many others, died prematurely. One can't help but wonder what her life would have been like if she had boarded her designated ship and landed in America safely. Her hopes had sunk under the icy seas. The tangible link between Marion's narrative and the other unknown experiences of individuals on board the tragic ship, however, is still her alligator handbag. It serves as a moving reminder of the transient nature of our hopes and the frailty of life. Number two, bronze cherub. A bronze cherub that once decorated the great staircase of the tragic ship is an intriguing addition to the Titanic artifact show. This lamp's cherub, currently on display at the Luxor Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, was once situated close to the stairway leading from the sea deck to the promenade deck. Cherub figurines may be seen all around the Titanic, but they were most significant near the five-level grand stairway. It's unclear where exactly this specific cherub came from. Given that it is smaller than the cherubs on the landings of the main staircase, some specialists think it originated from the upper level of the first-class grand staircase. The statue's torch and left foot, which were probably lost when it was forcibly transported from its original place, are absent. When James Cameron's blockbuster movie Titanic was released, it attracted further notice since it was used as the backdrop for Jack and Rose's passionate exchanges on the grand staircase. It's important to note that some people confuse this cherub with a smaller one that was found on the ocean floor. This artifact's religious meaning gives it an air of mystery and uncanny attraction. Cherubs are frequently shown as God's personal assistants or throne bearers. It is both unsettling and thought-provoking to see religious iconography in the midst of such a massive catastrophe. There were rumors that even God couldn't sink the Titanic before it set sail. Some religious people, however, believed that such utterances were blasphemous and that God would punish them. They viewed the Titanic's demise as the result of both human arrogance and God's vengeance. For some people, the cherub's survival and recovery had religious significance. The cherub's presence inspires reflection on the depths of religion and the bigger mysteries of existence. Number 1. Amy's Bracelet The Titanic, also known as the Unsinkable Ship, contained a great variety of rich goods in addition to the hopes and ambitions of her passengers. Amy's Bracelet, a stunning artifact pulled from the rubble, was one of these hidden gems. The Titanic carried an incredible quantity of diamonds and priceless gemstones on her tragic maiden voyage. According to estimates, the gems found aboard the ship were worth over $200 million, reflecting the luxury and elegance of the time. Amy's bracelet is a prime example of the splendor of the jewelry worn by the passengers on the ship with its exquisite design and priceless materials. Amy's bracelet, which was meticulously made, displays the creativity and technical prowess of the Times craftsmen. The contrast between the 15-carat gold and the overlay of silver highlights the bracelet's attractiveness. The silver overlay highlights the piece's craftsmanship and artistic talent by bringing a touch of delicacy and complex patterns to the overall design. The bracelet, which bears the name of its original owner, represents the relationships and personal histories of those who boarded the Titanic. Unfortunately, the owner, Amy, has still not been identified. It was more than just a piece of jewelry. It was a prized treasure that stood for love, commitment, and hopes for a happy future. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.